6.7920 a.m. item will have our health services team come up. Consideration of ordinance to regulate smoking and commercial tobacco use in efforts to address the health risk of second and third hand smoke to the community. There's room for you up here. <laughs> it's not a splash zone. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, good morning. Good morning. Pleased to be here today to present to you guys the smoke-free ordinance proposal. Uh, my understanding is that so this has been in the works for the last few years. And I want to personally thank Liberty Francis for her time and effort in this and all the support that she's gathered, uh, all the data that she's gathered. And so with that, I'm going to turn it over to her for a presentation to you guys. Thank you all for welcoming us back. Um, we were here uh, last year presenting on uh, multiple issues around tobacco-related illness and um, options that we could address those um, tobacco-related issues in our community with policy. And I want to thank you for um, asking us to bring this back to the table. Okay, so I just have a few things to go over before you guys have your turn to <laughs> ask questions. So the risks of secondhand smoke and or aerosol, um, just to define that, um, Vape or e-cigarette um, is not considered smoke, it's actually aerosol. Um, tobacco use continues to be the number one cause of preventable death and disease and disability. And in California, commercial tobacco is killing nearly 40,000 people each year, which equates to about 110 people a day. Secondhand smoke is especially harmful to children and uh, those folks that are already uh, compromised with other illnesses. It can result in respiratory tract infections, ear infections, cause asthma flares, hospitalizations, and more. Secondhand smoke is responsible for an estimated 430 sudden infant deaths, SIDS, in the U.S., Studies also show that exposure to secondhand smoke increased the risk of cancer and heart disease by 25 to 30 percent. The Surgeon General has declared that there is no risk-free level of exposure to secondhand smoke. Even short exposures can cause health risks. So the 2024 um, American Lung Association grade report card was um, just recently published. And again, um, we're looking at Fs in most of our um, jurisdictions in Lake County, with the exception of the smoke-free area in Clear Lake, where they received an A. Um, Lakeport is at a D um, due to the policy that was established previously at the fairgrounds to go smoke-free, um, and the Lakeport Unincorporated is sitting at, as, at an F. Um, so commercial tobacco costs. Annual costs of smoking um, is about $18 billion, which includes an estimated $9.8 billion for health care costs, $1.4 billion in loss of productivity from illness, and $3.8 billion costs our state Medi-Cal program for illnesses related to tobacco use. Commercial tobacco um, costs to the environment, um, cigarette butts are still the number one trash picked up in um, roadsides and beaches. And California cities spend more than $41 million yearly on cleaning up tobacco product waste. So smoke-free workplaces in Lake County, I just wanted to share that um, in June, June 24th of 2014, the Lake County Health Services um, adopted a smoke-free department policy, and it was um, approved by resolution of your board. And at that time, they posted signs on the gates, on, uh, in the parking areas, on our gazebos that um, staff and community members use. 
uh, letting them know that that is a smoke-free environment. And they added it to their policy and procedure manual and and staff that are newly hired are informed that that campus is smoke-free. Following that year, uh, 2015, Sutter Lakeside Hospital uh, worked, they planned a smoke-free campus, Lake County Tribal Health, as well as Woodland Community College, and then, as I mentioned previous, the fairgrounds. The only way to eliminate secondhand smoke exposure is to prohibit smoking and vaping near air intakes, entryways, enclosed spaces, and outdoor areas which others gather. Smoke-free policies can improve human health, reduce health care costs for those exposed to secondhand smoke, reduce fire risk because of the littered tobacco products that are a high risk of fire, and then reducing property maintenance and rental turnovers for those who are smoking in their rented homes. So there's some information I have for you. And if you have any specific questions about the ordinance that was put for you, just let me know. You want to talk a little bit about what the ordinance says and does for which properties in the county? So um, it does discuss, um, obviously, uh, it was very important that um, um, you wanted it to address our county workplaces, especially this facility here, that um, there was a gathering of folks uh, right in the entryway that tend to use tobacco products or other um, combustible products that are exposing workers and and such. Um, it would also address, obviously, our county parks, those kid-friendly areas. Um, and the current state law already addresses um, outdoor smoking um, in Entryways. entryways to businesses. So um, this would uphold some of those state laws, um, but also make some of them stronger for the unincorporated area of Lake County, since the city of Clear Lake already passed their smoke-free mm -hmm. um, environment policy previously. So um, it is very similar to Clear Lake's policy that's already established. So you used it as a model. And that's the, the ordinance that got an A in the report card. Okay. Anything else to add? Not at this time. All right. Thank you very much. We'll turn it over to you guys. Any comments or questions from board members? Supervisor Green. <coughs> yeah, thank you. Uh, and I want to thank uh, Ms. Francis and Director Arden for meeting uh, with me uh, briefly yesterday to talk about some of the concerns I'm going to raise here today. Mm -hmm. um, but as pointed out, state law already uh, prohibits smoking uh, in any number of places, including workplaces, including multi-unit housing, including our jail. Uh, and thank you for the handout. So I have uh, government code sites, health and safety code sites, penal code sites, labor code sites, vehicle code sites. Mm -hmm. uh, you can't even uh, smoke in your own vehicle with a kid in it. So I guess my first question is, before we dive into the meat and potatoes of this ordinance, is doesn't the county already have the authority and ability to enforce state smoking laws? Um, it, you would have to assign um, somebody to that enforcement group and then find how that's going to be put together. But um, the, as you mentioned, some of those things on the flyer that I sent you last night, um, it doesn't cover each area that we have in here. So you said multi-unit housing or apartment complexes. That is only HUD-funded apartment complexes. It is not related to any other um, independently owned or not hud housing. So um, there are loopholes within each one of those categories. And currently, our county parks are not smoke-free. Mm -hmm. And just so, uh, for clarification, this is not a multi-unit. Yeah. No, it is band. not. This is yeah. public yeah. areas. County properties, mm -hmm. buildings, and uh, parks. Uh, well, as worded, and I want to clarify with county council, uh, most ordinances, when they come across, are expressly referred to uh, properties with the unincorporated county. I don't see that similar limitation in this ordinance, uh, nor do I see any limitation to uh, county parks and public areas. What I do see is a fairly expansive definition 
a public event areas, public places, recreational areas, uh, such that uh, the way I'm reading it anyway, uh, Basically, any public place in the Lake County, whether it's a county park or not, would be subject to the provisions of this ordinance. Is that incorrect? Um, it's my understanding that as far as the workplaces, it was any county-owned workplace mm -hmm. and also county parks mm -hmm. and areas in with, within the unincorporated county. Right, because it's county-owned. Or maintained. I'll just read the definition. Public place, any publicly or privately owned place that is open to the general public, regardless of fee or age requirement, including sidewalks, streets, parking lots, plazas, shopping areas, stadiums, and sporting facilities. Public event areas means any publicly or privately owned place used for an event, open to the general public, <clears throat> including a farmer's market, a parade, a fair, or a festival. Mm -hmm. um, so... I see a fairly expansive list of recreational areas, service areas, outdoor dining areas, places of employment, public event areas, and other public places mm -hmm. not limited to county facilities and applying, at least as currently worded, to all of Lake County, not just the unincorporated portions. And then when I turn to the violations and penalties, uh, it starts off uh, easy enough with a 50 buck fine and all that, but then you have the whole gamut of alternative remedies up to including injunctive relief. Right. I, th I believe the first um, offense was written very clearly to ask the person to extinguish their smoking device or um, product and that the owner or manager of whatever the facility they were on would have the right to ask them to leave the $50 fine was a later result if they needed to have that in place, but it was definitely not a first um, response to somebody smoking or using um, tobacco products on the property. I also want to thank you for sharing the uh, matrix of local uh Smoke-free outdoor air policies in California. It's a fascinating list. It runs 28 pages, uh, and depending on the city or county, if they exceed state law, they can do anything from uh, addressing smoking in outdoor dining areas, outdoor bar, uh, bar areas, outdoor public events, uh, rights of way, and some of them go so far as to ban uh, vape cartridges entirely. Exactly. So uh, based on your understanding, not only do we have a hodgepodge of state laws that may or may not have any state enforcement attached to them, uh, we have a, a growing body of local ordinances that attempt to inject uh, local wisdom uh, on addressing this important public health issue. Um, I'm just going to end with a comment. I think this ordinance before us is overbroad. Uh, I think tobacco regulation, just like cannabis regulation and alcohol regulation is a matter of statewide concern. Uh, I think it's untenable for CDPH or any state agency to uh, actually encourage uh, this continued proliferation of uh, hodgepodge regulations. Uh, I pulled another item for a grant application. There is no uh, standing state funding source apparently for this. So if we are gonna talk about enforcing this ordinance, we're gonna have to come up with some money. And uh, uh, those are my comments right now. Well, I think you're kind of confusing the tobacco retail license ordinance a little bit with the smoke-free ordinance. The smoke-free ordinance is just really prohibiting smoking in those areas where the tobacco retail license is a separate ordinance that is uh, solving the problem that we have locally of no enforcement of selling to minors um, and selling flavored vapes and things like that. So this one's the smoke-free ordinance for the county properties. On all properties. Anyway, those are my comments. Okay. Any further comments or questions? So I, I know that um, this is something that I've been wanting to see us debate and talk about mm -hmm. for a while. Um, our parks where we want families to mm -hmm. go to and enjoy their times uh, do not have any smoke-free policies. I think right. to me that is an easy 
uh, common ground that I would think that we can all get to, that yeah. if we have a place where we want our children, our youth to go and enjoy, right. uh, that they should have the right to breathe fresh air. Absolutely. Uh, not to say you can't smoke, but not here, not in this area. Right. Uh, there's nothing in here that prohibits anybody from smoking or purchasing tobacco within this specific ordinance. Uh, this just says in some areas we want the general public to all enjoy a certain <laughs> level of quality of life and clean. Uh, we, 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 we talk about having one of the cleanest airs in the U.S. It makes no sense to go to the park with your kids and not have that same capability. Uh, I know that it's Unfortunate how often it happens when I walk in through the doors here. Mm -hmm. I don't know if people are nervous about the fourth floor, uh, but whether it's smoking tobacco or cannabis, it happens way too often. And sometimes it's further than 25 feet away, but still on the campus, mm -hmm. uh, still on the property. Um, I know there was a lot of fear when public health did their uh, smoke-free policy, mm -hmm. and there has not been anybody that has left specifically because of that. Mm -hmm. uh, and people who want to smoke continue to smoke, but do so at the uh, at the right areas and the right spots. Uh, I also know that I was part of creating a smoke-free campus at Woodland Community College. Mm -hmm. uh, no impact other than positive impacts. Right. Uh, again, we're not controlling people on what they want to do. It's where they can do it so that it's more conducive to everybody being able to enjoy themselves in specific locations. Now, with that, I will say maybe there is some better wording that we can utilize. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe in uh, Section 2A, where it says smoking and tobacco use is prohibited in the unenclosed areas of the following places within the unincorporated areas of Lake County. That way it's very specific to mm -hmm. the unincorporated and the cities can do their own since already one right, city yes. already has one anyways. Um, and maybe also saying on the properties owned or leased by, mm -hmm. and I think that's why it says private because we don't own every single facility Absolutely. that uh, that we have, that we utilize. Mm -hmm. And so maybe we can incorporate some of that language to make it a little bit more specific. Yeah. Um, that's my offer to uh, make some slight changes that I think still covers what it is that we're attempting to do, mm -hmm. um, but gives a little bit more specificity. Fantastic. Any further comments or questions? Then I will open it up for public comment. I see we have Director Turner. We'll start there. Good morning. Thank you. Um, I appreciate health services bringing this discussion to, to the public today. Nobody can argue about the health complications and the damage that is happening to people who have no business incurring uh, tobacco damage. Um, <clears throat> if I could just uh, remind the board that last year, uh, the board did approve in concept the options for um, special events regarding cannabis and other uh, on-site consumption possibilities in a variety of zoning districts. This uh, cannabis policy update is ongoing at this time and it was the goal or it is the goal to take cannabis regulations from the various different parts of our zoning ordinance and code and consolidate it into one clearly understood policy update in a single zoning ordinance article. This, the ordinance as it is presented today is very unclear as to what sort of regulations of cannabis are being um, uh, proposed. It does mention cannabis in uh, some of the findings regarding the health damages, um, but it's really not clear uh, the overarching limitations of cannabis use in the future. Uh, so it also is not very clear on who's doing the enforcing. So it does mention that uh, finding that the cannabis should be a, a, or that the actually refers only to smoking and tobacco use. Um, but it does refer to it both as a public nuisance and also refers to civil code enforcement. Mm -hmm. So I'm not clear if this is something then that would be taken on by our code enforcement division, or if this is something that would be left to law enforcement. I'd really appreciate if that could be clarified in general. Um, but additionally, I would request that the references to cannabis smoking um, be removed from this ordinance so that we can continue our work on um, on 
preparing a cannabis policy update in a single ordinance to bring to the board um, at a future date and regulation regarding where cannabis can be consumed um, would be included in that ordinance. Thank you very much. Sounds good. May, may I make a comment? About please, in the microphone. Um, so the in the microphone, that, please. Oh, sorry. <laughs> the reason that the cannabis um, smoke was addressed in this policy is because cannabis smoke also has harms to one's health. Um, as a second hand, um, not only could it potentially get into a child's system and have an effect of that high from being um, too close to that cannabis smoke and inhaling it. Um, but also the cannabis smoke contains over 30 known carcinogenics in that smoke as well. So it may not be the same as tobacco smoke, um, but it is still a risk to the non-smoker. And thank you for that. And my response would be if we made the changes as I suggested, mm -hmm. I don't know that any issues that were brought up about uh, cannabis would be an issue. Um, they're not doing those events on county property. Right. Uh, the dispensaries or the smoking lounges are not going to be on mm -hmm. county leased or owned properties. Right. So I, if, if those changes were made there, mm -hmm. I think that it would uh, allow for private enterprise to continue to, because I believe if you have a private club uh, in the state of California, you can't smoke indoors. You just can't do it if it's open to the general public. <laughs> and so I think that there are ways to still allow those types of things mm -hmm. but in general a public area right. uh, this would owned by the county leased by the county that's the only ones that it would uh, have impact on supervisor green and again i appreciate your offer to amend uh, 2a to add the phrase unincorporated um, but all those service areas recreation areas outdoor dining areas you're not proposing a limitation of county-owned facilities if you get there and say this only applies to county workplaces and county owned facilities, you know, discussion over. The way it's worded is much broader than that. Yeah. Uh, the point about the cannabis event, uh, you know, hopefully it's just the unincorporated county, but at the fairgrounds, we just had Lake Fest with 500 people there. Guess what? They were smoking cannabis. And uh, whether it's a private club or a public event, people smoke tobacco too. So I get that we can all agree that it is a Prop 65 carcinogen, whether it's cannabis or tobacco smoke. Where we're here talking about today is the public policy where people, grown adults, 21 and up, possess and use a state legal product. Where can they do that? And so the way this is currently worded is much broader than county-owned facilities only. Okay. So, uh, and to the point raised by Director Turner, um, yeah, if code enforcement is called out in this ordinance, which it very expressly is in the uh, violations and penalties, um, CDD needs to have uh, input into this and, and kind of uh, address any zoning ordinance mm -hmm. changes that might need uh, to be uh, implemented as a result of this. And a text amendment to the zoning ordinance would go to the Planning Commission and among other stops. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, if we can uh, shrink it down to the county footprint only, number one, it's redundant because probably our, our county workspaces, other than the uh, public parks, probably have a very good tobacco policy already in place. Mm -hmm. I, I, not that I've seen yeah, countywide. Not that I've seen on that one, other than the Lake County Health Services. Yeah, they're the only ones currently. Um, and, and I will say there's... Um, Knowing what the ordinance is in the city of Clear Lake, this does apply to businesses as far as the entryway. Mm -hmm. And again, this is, I don't mean to bridge to the other ordinance that we're going to talk about, but this is an enforcement that does not occur. And without it being on a resolution, there is mm -hmm. no enforcement whatsoever. ATF is not going to come out for somebody that's smoking right in front of the grocery store mm -hmm. to tell somebody to stop. It just doesn't make sense for that. And, and granted, it, most of the time people yeah. are asked and they will stop. Mm. And if it becomes a harassing situation, it's nice to have a tool in your toolkit to be able to deal with those situations. Um, I'm perfectly fine with the outdoor dining areas. What I'm, what I'm hearing, and granted I haven't heard from all my colleagues, um, is maybe baby steps of first 
all county properties, right. unincorporated areas. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'm outdoor dining areas. I'm not going to that restaurant if so, people are smoking. Right. And and yeah. that, that's just your choice. We we are also looking. At, we we've talked so much about changing our health metrics, mm -hmm. our health outcomes. Uh, we are 56 out of 58, and smoking is one of those big mm -hmm. shining lights of the things that we are doing that is absolutely unhealthy. Right. Our children are accessing it like crazy, mm -hmm. and we haven't done anything about it. Right. And these are things that, again, we're not trying to stop people from doing those things. We're trying to separate it so that we can have clean environments mm -hmm. conducive to positive outcomes and positive activities. Um, I'm I'm really weirded out that we are. Um, I I know I got a text and a comment about the uh, cannabis stuff as well, but I, I I I don't whether I smell cannabis or I smell tobacco, it, it's not an enjoyable right. situation. Yeah. If I'm at a parade, if I'm at a uh, restaurant, if I'm walking walking to, to the courthouse, exactly, and I. I we unfortunately have lost some public etiquette on how to be kind to one another. Mm -hmm. um, and unfortunately, I think that means we got to set some rules and help our health metrics and uh, see what we can do to do better. Uh, continuing to be unhealthy and continuing to be almost dead last in our health metrics makes absolutely no sense to me. Right. Uh, saying that it's uh, freedom. Well, OK, the freedom to smoke versus the freedom not to have to inhale chemicals mm -hmm. is Again, it's no. just one area. It's not the whole entire county or the whole entire community. Um, so I'm, I'm struggling with the, the, the conversation, but I think I'm okay with looking at a piecemeal and mm -hmm. just at least pushing this forward slightly rather than not pushing it at all because not pushing it at all means we're okay with the status quo. Mm -hmm. And status quo... Right. It's not good, it's not good enough anymore. So. I don't necessarily... I mean, just wanted to comment on something you said. I don't think necessarily there was an etiquette etiquette to begin with. I mean, people were used to smoking. You know, my grandpa's one of them. He's even one of those I had to yell at for throwing the butts out the window. I'm like, you can't do that. Right. Um, and then the folks that are smoking cannabis are kind of like doing it now because they can mm -hmm. and because they're keeping it as that mindset is, uh, uh, well, it's smoking and we're allowed to do it now. So, so I think this is a good start, um, you know, to at least lay some sort of foundation. Absolutely. So I'm looking at um, Section 5, Enforcement, and um, Item B says the person or employer that has control of that area in which tobacco is restricted mm -hmm. would have the authority to ask them to quit smoking, extinguish, mm -hmm. leave the property, um, so forth. So item C says county staff or volunteers will be notified. Notified of the requirements and the policies, county staff will commit to the requirements. Um, so it it's pretty much set out that the enforcement would be of if it is a county workplace, we establish a policy, a policy mm. in the employee handbook that states your workplace is now smoke free. Mm. Um, if it's a matter of a county park um, and somebody is using those products in the county park, once this is established, then those employees um, would have the right to say, hey, you know, this is a smoke-free, we're going to assist with signage mm -hmm. um, and education to the community. So um, it doesn't necessarily mean that law enforcement needs to get involved, but if it is a store owner that's repeatedly asking somebody that's hanging out in front of their establishment to quit using these products and they don't, then they have the ability to issue that $50 fine or take it to that level of um, law enforcement interaction. So that's not what we're looking at as a best practice. Right. Most yeah. people will comply, mm -hmm. but um, it may take a little bit of time to learn. This is going to be a new social norm. Yeah. If you don't mind, I'd like to share my experience. So one of my first entries into public health was when I was 18, 19 years old. And just like uh, you, Chair Sabatier, I was very involved with the smoke-free campus of the University of Central Missouri campus, and I heard all the negative things, like how, how are you going to enforce this, blah, 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 what, who, is campus police going to be handing out citations, and, uh, or we're going to lose student enrollment, or parents aren't going to want their kids to come here. All of, the, all of that actually ended up being completely opposite. Our enrollment actually increased the next year when we went smoke-free on the campus, and we got like 100% compliance 
with the students because people tend to follow the rules. They understand that when you live a part of society that government helps with the rules and people tend to follow them. So the next year we really had very little uh, non-compliance with the smoke-free ordinances on campus and most smokers actually welcomed it. I think at the time we had our student population was 35% smokers and the smoke-free uh, resolution passed by the student body by like 82%. So that means even a lot of the smokers on campus actually voted for it and passed it because they understood that, yeah, maybe I have a right to smoke, but I don't have the right to harm other people or uh, make their experience on campus less enjoyable. So I, I feel like this model would work as well in our county parks and our facilities where people will follow the rules and, uh, and if people aren't, then it's more of a self-enforcement, like, hey, can you please step back another 25 feet or can you please put that out? Um, I think that would work very well and we don't have to get code enforcement or law enforcement involved with this ordinance. Thank you very much for your comment. If there's nothing further, I'm gonna open it up for public input. Oh, please, come on up. Kevin Lewis with the Chief Deputy with Lake County Probation. We really appreciate public health bringing this up. One of the areas that our department is involved in is throughout the county, we go to fifth grade classrooms and we do education on tobacco, vape, et cetera. And one of the, one of the, the ways that we really um, appreciate where public health is coming from on this is when the students have exposure at such young ages to these products, whether it's you know schools, public areas, where we're trying to get them to go out and be able to do uh, pro-social, fun, enjoyable activities, um, they're put in a position to where the, they begin using and it, being exposed to these products, and now we have a position that 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 very negatively impacts their development and then the older they get the more um the more intense it affects their development and so having a, a structure where there's an understanding of that we want our kids to be healthy mm -hmm. whether that's young age kids whether that's older age kids and preventative ways that th we can do that without having to have these kids go into intensive counseling services to get intense help that they need for products that, they're, that they've been exposed to at a young age and are now using um, is gonna be really beneficial for the youth and families around our county. Um, and so I can safely say that being involved at multiple school districts around the county this is not something that it's one area that's impacted, it's impacted in multiple areas. And so very worthwhile discussion to have and we thank public health for bringing it to our attention. Thank you very much. Sorry. Hello. Um, thank you, supervisors, and thank you, staff, um, for all your hard work on this. Uh, Greg Dameron with Blue Zones Project. Uh, prior to working in Lake County, I worked for County of Sonoma's um, Department of Health Services. I was one of, um, uh, I was on the, the tobacco prevention staff team supporting all nine jurisdictions enforcement of their outdoor smoke free, uh, free policies. In those two years, as one of the main staff workers assigned, our team only received maybe four um, calls for support from local jurisdictions or private properties regarding the enforcement of outdoor smoking um, laws. Um, it's, as was mentioned, it's, there's an intention of uh, self-enforcement. If you don't have a sign there, you don't have a policy, then there's assumption that that um, behavior can continue. So yes, there's the devils in the details and those will be worked out. I think that's great. I think um, the, the important thing is to honor the intention and the urgency of this. Um, during the Tubbs fire, I'm, I'm not a hero, but during the Tubbs fire, I, I opted to stay and save neighborhood properties. Um, I damaged my lungs. I had pretty good lungs beforehand. Um, when I walked here today, I had to walk through a cloud of um, two people smoking right there. Um, if I was in a wheelchair, if I had COPD, if I was um, an at-risk youth who um, was trying to avoid starting or I had just quit, maybe I was in... Um, uh, uh, a senior that had finally quit smoking, there should be a right to not have to um, have exposure to those, um, 
those chemicals. Also the behavior, you know, when we have family events um, at a park, if we've got, um, you know, six 22-year-olds vaping right there and it's a family event, without a policy, there's no way to say, hey, can you take that elsewhere? So this is just common sense. Yes, we'll, um, we trust you all to deal with the intricacies of the details and, and definitions. But self-enforcement is really how it works. Um, I've been in this world um, supporting code enforcement as well as grassroots community um, solutions to secondhand smoke for about 10 years. And it's not complicated. It's um, the, the time... Um, the time that we, we spend resolving those would be great, but let's get this passed because we, we, we needed this 10 years ago. Right. We really did. So thank you. Yep. Thanks for everything. Thank you. All right. Good morning. Uh, Lars Ewing, Public Services Director. Uh, so for the purposes of this discussion, that, that includes parks and, and buildings and grounds under the county control. Um, just to, to highlight something that the Supervisor Green brought up, and that's the uh, I guess I'll just say the um, uh, variety of different codes that exist, laws at the at the state level um, for both county buildings or, or public buildings uh, as well as public parks. Uh, just a few examples: county buildings, any any public building, uh, no smoking uh, presently without any any local action, uh, no smoking within 20 feet of any uh, door or oper operable window uh, at, at a county park, uh, no smoking 25 feet from a playground, uh, county uh, at a county or city park, any park. Uh, 250 feet from any youth sp sports event. So there, there are already uh, uh, laws in place mm -hmm. um, proposed uh, looking to the future. Uh, as your board is aware, the county is, is just wrapping up the, uh, the Parks, Recreation and Trails Master Plan. Um, uh, one of the, the, the immediate actions after that is going to be a, essentially a whole scale rewrite of our, of our parks code, which I fully anticipated having a, a, a smoking component in that, uh, working with public health. So uh, conversations with Director Arden, that was, that was uh, intended to be a part of it. Um, I, it, it likely, I, I uh, expected that it would, it would go the route that, that, he's, uh, that is being proposed, that, that you're considering here, which is uh, no smoking on the grounds. i leave that to the board's direction. Um, uh, but also, I, I appreciate the fact that that we talked about enforcement here. Uh, my staff, uh, you know, our, our responsibility is the is the facility itself, uh, the, the grounds. It's it's not the enforcement of that. So, uh, if if, uh, if we put up signs, uh, that's that's wonderful. But um, but I I won't be expecting my parks maintenance staff or building maintenance staff to to be going around and, and enforcing that. Their responsibility is to is to to, to fix the lights and ensure the the, the toilets are are are, uh, are flushing. Uh, you know, very simple examples there, but uh, but if, if now we're, we're expanding that, um, the, I would have some concerns if the expectation is that, you know, county employees uh, are, are going to be the ones that, that, that would be uh, responsible to, to tell someone not to smoke and, and the onus is on them. So that, that's, I think that's something that, that needs to be worked out there. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, but as it relates to, to county buildings, uh, county grounds and, and the parks, I, I think this is in line with, uh, with where, uh, where I anticipated taking the, 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 the parks code uh, and, and the building piece could, could be uh, absolutely a part of that. So I, I just wanted to uh, make sure that, uh, that you, you knew where we were now and where, we were, where I was propose, proposing to take at least county parks. So, okay. Thank you very Thank much. You. Samantha Bond, Executive Director for First Five Lake. Um, I, I really appreciate Health Services bringing this to um, the Board of Supervisors. It's really important that we protect our littles. Um, they don't have a say. They don't get to choose what goes into their lungs. And so when we're talking about public places, regardless of it being tobacco, vape, or cannabis, they don't get a say. It is the individual who is near them that is telling them whether or not they have that second or third hand smoke. And I, I know that it's in the definitions here, but third hand smoke, just so that everybody knows, is that uh, gunk that sits, that residue that's always there, that's very difficult to get rid of. And we know that all of our littles touch everything and everything goes back into their mouths. Mm -hmm. And so they don't get that choice and that opportunity to say, no, I don't want this. No, I don't need this. When it is going to impact them the most, it is their little lungs that are suffering. It is their little bodies that are suffering from this kind of thing. So to bring this forward and to be able to have this as a, as a one means of protection for our littles is crucial and really important. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else in the chamber wishes to speak on this item? I have a couple hands up in Zoom. Please come on up. 
our group of people, tribal people, youth, <coughs> this is through the CIMCC that have been working for four years. And this year they launched a program called <sighs> Honor the Air Program. And they've been going through tribal areas of Lake Mendocino and Sonoma County to advise, to teach, educate on the well-being of their families and others. And they're giving this information away all the time. And you can go online. Um, I've been part of that for the um, traditional tobacco and how to spread that information because it actually does affect all the other smoking situations in this world that you all are talking about. So um, it is at the www.cimcc.org slash forward slash PPP. And you can look that up and they're doing great work all the time. And they're youth, they're the youth of the people we're wanting to preach. Thank, Thank you. you. Anyone else in the chamber wishes to speak on this? I'd just like to add that um, this policy does address that this is commercial tobacco and not sacred use for ceremonial purposes. Thank you for that. I have one thing that I would like to expand on that I've been hearing from a couple members of the audience, and that is it's not just second and third hand smoke that we're exposing to our young ones. It's witnessing the act of seeing it in county parks and near county buildings that sends a message to the little kids that smoking is okay or that it's a normal or ex accepted behavior. By limiting smoking in some of these areas, you're not just removing the harmful thing, but you're also sending a powerful message to the kids that this is no longer a universally accepted thing to do in society. <coughs> And by passing an ordinance like this, you are sending a message that we are taking here in Lake County, we are taking our health outcomes and our health disparities seriously. Thank you for that. I'm gonna call on uh, Rachel Dillman Parsons first on Zoom. Good morning, board. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Yep. All right. Um, I fully support. Oh, uh -oh. No, we can't hear you. We just lost you. We had you. <laughs> you heard the important you. part. <laughs> <laughs> you should be back. She was also promoted the panelist, so she should be able to share video now. Okay. You're muted at this moment. Oh, I'm sorry. There they we are. joined me as a panelist, and I think it muted me. Where did I? <laughs> I'll start over. So um, I support this uh, in general to um, you know keep the health and safety of uh, the population uh, in Lake County. Um, however, uh, I have concerns about our Anderson Ranch facility and would like to see that addressed, perhaps in ordinance. We have a very long driveway. That is not our property, um, but it is uh, lined by a lot of uh, weeds. And I am fearful that people who normally smoke at our facility will be walking down that driveway uh, to smoke and perhaps increase fire danger. Um, so I would request that be taken into consideration. That said, I do support um, creating a smoke-free environment for the health of everybody. So I hope we can find a solution. Thank, Thank you. you. Bless you. Uh, large Union Public Services Director again. That, just in, in uh, follow up to that, that, that is a lease facility. So I think it, just to emphasize the fact that there's, or the point that there are, you know, county owned buildings, we're in one, uh, but there are leased buildings that, that have leases with uh, yes, yeah. obviously the owner. And so that, that uh, each one uh, would have to be considered as a, as a part of this process. So uh, I appreciate that being brought up and, and I, it was already referenced, but I uh, wanted to just emphasize that that was one example. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next, we have Aaron McCarrick. Um, thank you, Supervisors. This is Aaron McCarrick in Clear Lake. And uh, thanks for bringing up this conversation. Definitely support the uh, keeping our public spaces smoke free, making sure that that is a healthy place for everybody, kids, adults, everyone. Um, but echoing what uh, has been said before that making sure that it is clear that it is not privately owned establishments or 
private events um, that choose to operate whichever way they choose to operate. Because there's plenty of smoking public smoking bans in many cities across California, but they still do not um, expand into privately owned businesses. And echoing what Director Turner said about um, maybe incorporating with the cannabis ordinance rewrite, just creating more of a comprehensive um, approach to it. Um, also, just for curiosity's sake, I'm wondering if there is um, any supporting documents. I tried to look at the, the stuff on the Board of Supervisors agenda website, but any supporting documents for some of the research that's in there in the uh, proposed ordinance and some of the citations in there. Um, yeah, that is it. Thank you so much for this time. And again, just a little bit um, less broad on the ordinance is uh, my comment. Thank you very much. And I would say reach out to one of us and we'll see if we can connect you with uh, public health services to get you some of that uh, data and information. Mm -hmm. um, let's move on to iPhone 2. Hello, my name is Jessica Pender and I am in Lower Lake. And I am going to echo, uh, thank you, Board of Supervisors, first off, for holding this. And I'm going to echo with Aaron and Director Turner on being less broad in the ordinance and taking the private events out of it. And also maybe looking into other uses of unhealthy items in parks, around grocery stores, and other public areas. And thank you again for looking at this, because I do agree smoking for our children and adults and anybody is an unhealthy thing. Thank you. Thank you. And Jennifer Smith. And you're still muted. And if you Sorry. can just put your hand down when you're done uh, so I know not to call on you again. Thank you. Um, Jennifer Smith, and I, I did want to address the cannabis portion of this. We just had a very success, uh, you know, a first time event, Lake Fest Cannabis Cup. I'm proud to say that my farm won first place. And I think that this is. Um, we're not going to be able to continue to have and grow this cannabis event or the industry if we're not allowed to have a, a ticketed event. And it says very specifically in this right in this write up that regardless of fee, um, where did it say? Um, regardless of a, you know if it's a ticketed event or not, that you're not going to be able to have this and. You know, I agree. There's consideration that needs to be had and people need to have manners and not be blowing smoke over children or anybody else of any age. But I just want to make sure that if it is known that and advertised that smoking will be held on, held on site, that those events are be able to take place. And that's not just cannabis. It's, you know, big smoke is a cigar smoking event with whiskey and there's ways to accommodate special events, and I don't think that they should be um, included to this degree. Thank you. Thank you very much. Those are all the hands in Zoom. I'm going to come back to the chamber, make sure there's no further public comment in the chamber. I see none. Um, I will make a couple of comments. I know um, that I've done events multiple times in places where you're not allowed to have a PA system, you're not allowed to have alcohol, but you can get special use mm -hmm. permits, uh, including at our schools, now that California passed that law, um, in order to get permission to do your own thing for a private event. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I there's been a lot of conversation. Um, I know that there was some offering uh, to look at the unincorporated areas, um, the county owned or leased areas. There was some comments made from multiple departments and wondering how the board feels 
about making a request to meet with those departments, come back with something that would be uh, similar to what you are offering, uh, but helps better understanding of who's the enforcement, mm -hmm. uh, what's the, the safety measures on, like for example, the Anderson Ranch, um, just kind of taking a look at those things and, and trying to implement mm -hmm. whatever needs to happen. Uh, I, I personally would like to see state law written in this because, again, no one from the state is coming in to do anything to help us with state right. law. This allows us to, but maybe not go above and beyond what the state law is. And I'd love to hear if that's a consensus from the board to please meet with them and come back to us um, because I'm very interested in moving forward with something right. uh, to help reduce what uh, folks, especially younger folks, uh, do not need to be subjected to so we can enjoy uh, the quality of life in our public spaces. Fantastic. Supervisor Paiska. Yeah, so I, I appreciate you bringing this. I know it's been a long haul and it's been a priority of ours for a long time, uh, but listening to the comments, it seems like we need to take another look at this. This isn't something that we should try and address on the fly. So I think definitely a little bit more collaboration with the different department heads to kind of address some of the concerns that we've heard today. Okay. Um, that would be my preference. Sure. Thank you for your comment. Supervisor Green? Sure, talk to as many department heads as you want. As it pertains to county facilities, again, my major beef with this, it is not limited to county facilities. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to take another run at the multi-unit housing. Uh, you can look here in Lakeport, you can go right down Bevins and look at the smokers in exile from their own apartments. Mm -hmm. They at least have the refuge out on the sidewalk. Uh, this would take that away. So going back to addressing multi-unit housing in this policy. Public places includes everything, sidewalks included. <laughs> so I'm just wondering, there's no opportunity in here for a designated smoking area of any type. Mm -hmm. And I'm looking to our subsidized housing here in Lakeport as the models. I don't want to criminalize people who are making their own choices of what to put in their own bodies. Yes, there is no constitutional right to smoke. I, mm -hmm. I assume it's not cited, but it's in there. But nor is there any constitutional right to guarantee a smoke-free uh, smoke environment. Um, I, I hear, hey, kids can be exposed to smoke. Guess what? The first time they're exposed, more often than not, is in their own homes because their parents are smoking. Mm -hmm. And this is not going to address that. So if you can get me a smaller footprint that is not every public place in Lake County, including sidewalks and streets, if you can give a, some type of safe refuge for people that are using state legal substances. If we're not trying to bring cannabis out of the closet and then force tobacco smokers back in the closet at the very same instant, uh, to your point, yeah, role modeling is important, but mm -hmm. that doesn't mean we criminalize an entire subset of Lake County's population for making their own personal health choices. Mm -hmm. And uh, we do not have a constitutional right to regulate our citizens in that way. And when we see the divide in this county and when we see people uh, distrust government in general, it's this type of overreach that gets us there. Supervisor Simon. Yeah, I appreciate the conversation today. I know that these were started many years ago. Mm -hmm. And then obviously we had six years of disasters, one after the other, yeah. <laughs> which took a lot more priority. So I know the initial conversations um, that happened was we wanted something to come to the board. It's taken a lot longer than we wanted to, but obviously I'm in, I'm in favor of the conversation that we're having. I think there is a lot more work that needs to be done. And I agree about the smoking areas. You know, even in our airports here, United States, there's no smoking anywhere, but you can go smoke inside an airport because there's a designated smoking area. So uh, figuring some of those conversations out are important. And I think something to realize on this stuff as far as enforcement, there is no a one agency that's going to be able to enforce any of these things. Right. It's going to be a combination of just change behavior of right. the public mm -hmm. and understanding that. But um, as far as sending a message uh, that we are looking at this and, and looking to um, create safer zones for everybody mm -hmm. and opportunities there, especially with the growth of our parks we're going to have over the next decade, mm -hmm. I think is really important. So uh, I'm willing to hopefully, like mm -hmm. you said, have some more conversations, come back to the board, mm -hmm. but I am in favor of this ordinance getting passed at some point. Okay. So very well said. continue the conversation. Fantastic. I think too that uh, like in reading on O where it says smoke or smoking means inhaling, exhaling, or burning any tobacco, nicotine, cannabis, or plant product, like that 
could be like burning the wood when you're <laughs> uh, barbecuing with wood. You know, I mean, so just specifications. Another thing you mentioned too was was medicine for Native Americans that commonly don't use cigarettes. Um, the tobacco that was used ancestrally was actually picked locally, and it wasn't used like a, a common cigarette or anything like that. It was used for something specific, and that was that. So I, I think that it would help to come back with a little more delineation on some of this. Yeah. I, I do know that um, some folks have expressed their um, difficulty finding um, tobacco that they can use for their ceremonial purposes, and sometimes they are known to use other forms of tobacco. So that's why we wanted to make sure that this was only for commercial tobacco use and not ceremonial use. True. That it is. It's still used like they buy the bag or right. tear apart a cigarette or whatever the case may be. But mm -hmm. I, I hear you. It is used at, at times. Yeah. Um, but I think it can be um, explained better. Okay. Yeah. Do you need clarification of the direction being provided by the board? Um, I don't think so. I've okay. And luckily this is recorded, so it's and easy. And it's recorded to, yeah, as right. well. <laughs> it's easy to go back over the video and, yep. and get the comments yep. and... Um, Thank you very much for bringing this to the attention of the board. Yep. And, oh, CAO Parker. Yes, yeah, since this is in reference to an ordinance, we'd like to have it continued to a date and time certain. And the ninth is very full. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm looking towards what kind uh, of time? What kind of timeline do you guys need, do you think, in uh, meeting with all those departments and being able to bring it back? I'm think thinking we'll, maybe even August to give them the amount of time that they need. I was going to say like a month, a month and a half. That work for you? Mm -hmm. Okay. So we're looking at, is that August 6th? I'm looking at Johanna. I'll need a uh, August. time. Any, any day in August, at whatever time. At whatever time. That means we have empty agendas to fill up right now. <laughs> <laughs> so how about August? Is that the 6th that I'm seeing? I can't. Yeah. Yes. 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 Uh, August 6th at 10 a.m.? Okay. Okay. So right. looking for a motion to continue this uh, conversation. So moved. Second. second. Oh. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. All right, thank you. Thank you very we'll much. We'll get to work on those amendments for you and be back in six weeks. Perfect.